Hello chess lovers, Soren here and in this video I want to share with you a fantastic attacking game played by the reigning world chess champion Magnus Carlsen against Chinese chess grandmaster Li Chao. The game was played at 2015 Qatar Masters Open. I have to tell you that the game is extremely complicated but as usual I will try to keep it as simple as possible without delving too deep into the possible variations and not allowing you to get bored. So this is a game played in round 5 and Carlsen was playing with the white pieces opened up with d4 to which Li Chao responded with knight f6, c4, g6 and f3. This is an anti-Grunfeld move with which white is preparing to establish a massive pawn center. Of course black always has a chance to keep the game in the lines of Zemish variation of king's indian defense by playing d6 but in our game Li Chao proceeded with Grunfeld defense d5. c takes d5, knight takes d5, e4, knight b6, knight c3, bishop g7, bishop e3, black castled kingside, queen d2, knight c6 and Carlsen castled queenside. We have opposite side castlings and usually this leads to a sharp battle. The plans of both players are obvious. White will attack on the king's side, black will counter attack on the queen side. f5. Black is immediately undermining white center but I have to tell you that in here queen d6 is considered to be the main move. In our game we have f5 and after e5 we have knight b4 by black, knight h3, queen e8. This is move 11 and already we see a novelty. Before this bishop e6 had been seen many times. Black is attacking the pawn on a2, if king b1 then queen d7, if knight f4 then bishop f7. But in our game we have an interesting looking queen e8 move. From e8 black queen can not only support black knight to jump on a4 but also black can put his queen on f7 and put pressure on a2. This is something which we are going to see in our game. King b1 by Carlsen, a nice prophylactic move, a5, bishop e2, c6, rook c1 and king a8. It's not quite clear what Li Chao had in mind but this seems to be a dubious move. Quite possibly he is intending later to play bishop e6 and if a move like knight f4 he is securing the g8 square for the bishop but interestingly we won't see that idea in the game. A few moves later black will be forced to move back his king on g8 thus losing a precious tempo. King a1. In return Carlsen is also placing his king in the corner but his idea is clear later he is going to sacrifice the pawn on a2 and is not allowing black to win it with the tempo by announcing a check. Bishop e6 and after knight f4 we have queen f7 attacking the pawn on a2 but Carlsen didn't pay attention to that threat and instead proceeded with the counterattack h4. Bishop takes a2, a principal move black is accepting the pawn sacrifice and in return white is proceeding with a pawn push h5, king g8. Well this is like admitting that making king h8 move on move 14 was wrong. I have to tell you that instead of playing king g8 Stockfish suggests to play g5 thus sacrificing the exchange. Of course even in this case white is doing better but according to the engine this is a more preferable continuation for black. But instead in our game after h5 we have king g8 and h takes g6. So already white managed to open up the h file and this time we have g4 trying to weaken black's king side further. Bishop b3. With this move black is blocking the b pawn's path not allowing to move forward. For example if you go for an immediate a4 move then white can play g takes a5 and now a3 can be met with b3 and if queen takes b3 then knight takes g6 and white is just doing great. Looks like that white managed to neutralize black's attack while on the other hand Black king is in danger. That's why in our game after g4 we see bishop b3 and bishop d1 by Carlsen. White not only wants to get rid of this attacking 
light squared bishop but also is freeing the second rank to switch his queen into the attack from h2 square a4 queen h2 already we have a mating threat and rook f d8 queen h7 check king f8 and d5 white is not only attacking the knight on b6 but also is blocking the bishop's diagonal and e6 can be a nice threat for example if knight takes d5 then e6 can follow and this is going to have very unpleasant consequences for black if queen f6 then knight g6 can follow and yeah black king is in a mating net rook h8 the game is over in our game after d5 black played knight c4 inviting white to go for a move like e6 or knight takes g6 but e6 is a mistake e6 is a mistake at this point it's very important to keep the right move order in here carlson played knight g6 check but let's take a look why is e6 bad uh, because to e6 black can answer with a staggering a3 move black can go for a queen sacrifice and then can announce a checkmate or after a3 if you want accept the queen sacrifice and play a move like b takes a3 then again this won't help you bishop takes d1 is coming freeing the b3 square for the rook and finally if you accept the queen sacrifice then here comes rook b3 check and then the second rook is joining the attack there it goes rook a8 check followed by rook takes a7 checkmate a uh, very beautiful combination right that's why after knight c4 after this interesting looking knight c4 move carlson captured the pawn on g6 and announced a check king e8 well bringing into life a similar combination and sacrificing the queen won't work because white is a tempo up and in this position white has this beautiful rook a8 sacrifice and black king is getting checkmate hit if bishop g7 then bishop takes g7 uh, in the, that's why in our game after knight takes g6 we have king e8 and e6 there it goes e6 is on the board allowing a3 but already as with knight g6 check white forced black king to move on e8 white is winning black queen with the check so li Chao is also playing very aggressively right guys to e6 is answering with a queen sacrifice this is very interesting it takes f7 check carson accepted the queen sacrifice very very bold decision by Li Chao a queen sacrifice against the world chess champion himself king d7 well if king takes f7 then white has a very beautiful knight e5 check luring away black knight and then winning the bishop thus neutralizing all possible mating threats in our game we have king d7 and it looks like that black king has escaped and being a queen down, uh, black is creating mating threats. But like in the previous line, Carlsen made black's king move with knight e5 check. A very, very beautiful move with which Carlsen wants to lure away black knight from c4. Now if knight takes e5, then bishop takes b3 like in the previous line. That's why black played bishop takes e5. Uh, by the way, in here there is a very beautiful line which I want to share with you. If you want to announce a check from e5 and play a move like b takes a3, then there are study like checkmates out here which you should see. If king b1, then black has bishop c2 check. Now if rook takes c2, then rook b3 check is coming and it turns out that white king is in a mating net. Knight d3 checkmate can follow or after... Uh, bishop c2 check if bishop takes c2 then rook a1 check is coming another marvelous move and then bishop takes c3 this is stunning guys king b1 and then knight a3 checkmate what a beauty right guys uh, let's go back in our game after king d7 knight e5 check that's why we see bishop takes e5 and queen takes f5 check by the way, other continuations are also losing. If knight takes e5, as I've already mentioned, bishop takes 
B3 is winning. If here, then here, yeah, no problem at all. Or if I move like King C7, then simply Knight takes C4. Already the Black Knight is removed and there are no mating threats. In our game, after Knight E5 check, so finally we see Bishop takes E5 and Queen takes F5 check. King C7, and at this point, realizing how dangerous black pieces can be, Carlsen decided to give back his queen and he went for queen takes e5, forcing black knight to leave its post on c4. Now, if you won't accept the queen sacrifice and play king c8, then queen e6 check is coming, and then the bishop can join the attack. And now, once you are blocking the A file, finally white can play B takes A3, and yeah, white is winning. That's why black accepted the queen sacrifice, so this is insane, guys. Both players sacrificed their queens in this razor sharp game, and finally bishop takes B3. The bishop on B3 finally end up hanging. But materially, black is not in a hopeless situation, because soon is going to win an exchange, but relying on the power of the white bishops and this passed pawn on the 7th rank, white will now finish up his opponent. Knight takes c1. Go on, buddy, what's happening? <laughs> yeah, in here, Carlsen played rook takes c1, king c8. Well, if knight takes f7, then d takes c6 can follow. Not only your knight on f7 is hanging, also there can be some very ugly checks from b5. That's why black played king c8 and d takes c6. b takes c6 and after f4, Carlsen forced a resignation. If knight d7, then g5 can follow and there is no way to stop this past pawns. Or if knight d3, then rook d1. With the threat of rook takes d3 and then f8 queen. If king c7, then f8 queen can follow, luring away the queen, winning the knight. White is totally winning, that's why finally on move 36 after f4, Li Chao resigned. A very, very beautiful and double edged game, which required a huge accuracy from Carlsen to win. From the deep dark forest, it was Carlsen who managed to find the right path, and let's admit that. He played a game truly in the style of the magician from Riga. That was great, Mr. Carlsen. In the end, a chess puzzle for you where the task is to find the winning line for white. It's white to move and I will wait for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching, here are more suggestions for you. Feel free to check them out as well. I will see you in my next video. Take care.